Section 7.1, the development of the periodic table. The periodic table is probably the most significant tool that chemists use for organizing and recalling chemical facts. It's got everything there. It's how the elements are related to each other. It talks about the subatomic particles. It talks about energy. Um, it also lists the similarities in um, properties. So chemical properties are in the same column. The reason they're in the same column is because every column has the same number of valence electrons. Remember, these are the outside electrons uh, the outer shield electrons uh, in an element. So if they are in the same column, they have the same um, last valence electron configuration, they will behave similarly to each other. Um, it's not always the case, though, that the physical properties are the same. So, for instance, in the same column, oxygen and sulfur are there. Oxygen's a gas, sulfur's a yellow powder, um, it doesn't really it doesn't really predict everything in terms of columns. What we do see is that you can actually uh, predict physical properties based upon what rows they are in. So so uh, there's just tons of information in it. So the table was configured over over mostly in the 19th century, at the end of the 19th century, in such a way to make. Um, to make it possible to make predictions about undiscovered elements. Uh, because if you would configure them such that you would know if there's something missing, then you could go look for it. And it happened um, on multiple occasions like that, where they could make predictions and then find an element to suit that place. So the periodic table developed over, you know, eons. You had, you had many of these... Uh, probably a dozen or so that the ancients knew about, that many of them are in their Latin names because the Romans and the Greeks and all of the ancient peoples knew. A lot of the metals that are that uh, you can dig out of the ground as metals, like gold, have been around for centuries, but many of the other ones have not because they're not found in their elemental form. They form ores, or uh, some kind of oxides that then when you when you dig it out of the ground, you don't even know what you have. So, so there have been lots of them discovered in the, in the 20th century, and then many of them are made. So even this picture is, is uh, only a few years old, uh, 2009, that's nine years ago, but all of the remaining pink squares on this table have been filled in um, because... Somewhere in a laboratory, people are making these and then naming them after, after others. In the mid-1860s, two different chemists, one in Russia, one in Germany, at really about the same time, proposed a periodic table that, may, that was so similar in many ways. Um, it's named after Mendeleev, the Russian, um, in some ways because... He was so sure that the periodic table would be useful that he could. He was making predictions, so he made predictions about the elements gallium. He made uh, predictions about germanium, and he could tell with pretty cool close accuracy things about it. He could say what the what the physical and chemical properties of this element was, even though that no one had ever dug it out of the ground before. So in 1871, he made predictions of germanium, and then when it was finally discovered in 1886 and they did a chemical analysis of it, it matched point per point nearly what Mendeleev had predicted based upon how he related all elements to other elements.